Okay, we have another one where we want to solve for x and we have a log equation. So on this one, we have two different logs and we have one here that's not a log. So we can't use that same process as before that only works uh, by canceling out the logs from both sides. You can only do that if you've got one log on one side and one log on the other. In this case, we've got an extra thing, the one here prevents us from just canceling out the logs. So instead, the way we're gonna solve this is we're gonna get all the logs onto one side of the equation. So I'm gonna move this term, move it across the equal sign, it's gonna become positive. If you move this across the equal sign, you're only gonna change the sign in front. You're not gonna change anything else inside here. You're not allowed to change anything inside there. You're only changing the one on the outside. Now I have log eight x plus seven. That's going to, uh, we're going to add, so plus log 8, 2 minus x, and that's going to equal 1. So again, what I did was I brought this term, just brought it over the equal sign, became positive, that's why there's a plus there now. We have two different logs, and the idea here is you want to get both the logs to be a single log, and then we'll change it into exponential form, that way we can solve it. The plus sign means that we're going to change that into multiplication. This is log 8 of x plus 7 times 2 minus x. So we change it into multiplication. Now we're going to change it from log form to exponential since we have a single log on this side. You take the base, raise the number after the equal sign. We're going to do 8 to the first power will equal x plus 7 times 2 minus x. So 8 to the first power of course would just be 8. So a question for you. Are you allowed to do this and this to solve for our answer? The answer to that is actually going to be no. Please don't do this one. You definitely do not want to do that step. That is wrong because that only works if you have a zero there for both of those. So because you don't have a zero, you're not allowed to do that step. So don't do this method. Instead, you want to multiply this out subtract the 8 and get it equal to 0 and then we're going to factor it and set both terms equal to 0. That's the correct way of doing it. So we're going to do that on this one. x times 2 you get 2x. x times here you're going to get minus x squared. And then we have, that was the first times this one, then we have x times that one, and then we're going to do the inside terms, so plus 14, and then I have minus 7x. So I've expanded all of it out. I'm going to add my like terms together, so I get negative x squared. Like terms, I have 2x minus 7 is minus 5x, and then plus 14. You want to subtract the 8 and get it to be equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 8 here, subtract 8 from there, and you get negative x squared minus 5x, uh, and that's going to be um, plus 6, and then we have that basically is going to equal 0, because that's what you get on that side. So we get this as a result. Now, because we have a negative in front of the x squared, it's going to be a lot easier to factor if you get rid of that negative in front. I, I've, I've seen time and time again a lot of people have problems. They'll mess up a sign when trying to factor something like this, so it's better to cancel it out. So I'm going to take the whole thing and multiply both sides by negative 1, and you get x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. So now it's, it's going to be easier to factor because we've got a 1 in front of there. Factoring both of these, we're going to get uh, 1 and 6. You want a 5, so you're going to do a plus 6 and a minus 1. 6 minus 1 will give you the 5, and if you multiply them, you get negative 6. When you set both of them equal to 0, you're going to get x is equal to 1, and x is equal, and negative, x is equal to positive 1, and x is equal to negative 6. So we get both of these answers. You want to make sure you put both these answers back into the original one. You want to make sure you don't get a negative number or zero inside your log. We want to check both of these to make sure they just make sure we don't get uh, any domain issues. If I put one into there, one plus seven, that's positive. That's fine. Two minus one, that's positive also. So I know for sure x equals one. That's definitely going to be one of my answers. Let's try negative six. Negative six plus seven is a positive one. Negative six, you have two minus a negative six. That also gives you a positive number, so therefore there's no domain restrictions. Both of these answers would be correct. You get one and you get negative six. So the question you might be thinking is, I thought you told us that no negative numbers are allowed as our answer, so why does negative six work? Okay, the answer itself can be negative, but the answer that you have, if you put it into the expression, 
that result inside the log cannot be a negative number. The answer itself can be negative, it's just that that number inside of here, that can't make that negative. So even though I have a negative 6 here, if I put that inside, 2 minus a negative 6 actually gives you a positive result. That's why this one works. So you do have two answers on this one, x is 1 and x is negative 6.